Hi, and welcome to the Effective Teaching Podcast. I'm your host, Dan, and we are going to be talking about being an effective teacher. Well, hey guys, I have a really short one for you today. I'm gonna be talking to you about three do's and three don'ts of effective and efficient feedback. So let's start off with the do's, what you should be doing when you're giving feedback. And there are three points. First off, you wanna identify an area for improvement. So as you're reading the student's answer to something or you're looking through their project or anything like that, you just wanna identify an, one area, really one area that you want them to improve. So it could be, you know, they need to increase the mode of their language, right? It needs to become more persuasive in what they're writing. And so that's what you're gonna say, okay, we need to improve your mode of writing, or maybe you want to focus on something else that they need to improve on. So maybe it's, uh, they need to improve their depth of research uh, as they go about answering something. And so you identify an area of improvement. That's step number one. Step number two is to give directions to the student uh, guiding them to learn the improvement. So if they need to go deeper with their research, then go, okay, you need to go deeper with your research when you're answering questions like this because it asks you to evaluate. And so I want you to go and do a Google Scholar search for this term or go and ask three different AI platforms to give you evidence for this, this, and this, right? So to support what you've got there and then come back and try and integrate that evidence into your answer. Right, and so that's giving them directions. You're not doing it for them, you're just giving them directions and going, this is where, what you need to do, right? You need to go and do this kind of stuff to improve this kind of answer. And then you wanna schedule a time to check that the student has done it. So there are three do's. Identify an area for improvement, tell them what they should do to improve it, and then schedule a time where you're gonna check in with that student and go, did you get that done? Right, have you actually improved? And you might want to you know, also give them time in class, but they're, they're your three do's for effective and efficient feedback. This is not feedback, right? I'm going to go through the don'ts in a sec, <laughs> right? But this is not the kind of feedback that's going to take a long time, okay? You read this, what they've given you, you're looking at whatever they've done, you've listened to what they've done, however it is that you're seeing the evidence of their learning, and then you want to identify one area of improvement, tell them how they can go about that process, and check, make sure you've scheduled time to check in with them to see that improvement having happened. Okay, so there are three do's. Now there's then three don'ts for feedback. You do not want to focus on everything. Okay, that's why I want you to focus on one area of improvement, not on 10. Okay, a student is going to be overwhelmed if they get, you know, even five or three things that they need to improve on. Give them one at a time. Make note of the other ones if you want to, and then you can raise them once they fix the other stuff. But focus on one thing at a time, the thing that makes the greatest improvement first. You don't want to be giving them marks or grades. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't mark stuff, right? If you, if you need to mark stuff for school, it's an actual formal assessment task, great. Mark it, do what you need to do, but don't put it on the paper, okay? Don't put it down on the stuff that you're about to give the student. You want to give the student the feedback and have them improve things before you give them marks because otherwise, as soon as they see the mark, it's done, it's over, I don't need to even bother. They won't do it. You're going to schedule that time, they're going to come back and it's not going to be done because they're already, as far as they're concerned, it's, it's finished, it's done and dusted. I would even encourage you, if you can, build in a process whereby the students submit something as a final thing, but they're gonna get feedback and have to improve it, and what they do in between actually gets them more marks or something like that would be helpful for motivating them to actually get into that improvement. But the fact that you're in the three do's, the fact that you're giving, they're telling them what to do to improve, rather than just saying, this is wrong, this is wrong, you know, I need you to improve this, I need you to improve that. But you're actually saying, in order to improve your persuasive writing, right, you need to go and understand what modes are and look at the different level of modes, right, the, the modal levels of writing. Uh, and, and you want them to actually shift from you know, lower mode to higher mode to improve the persuasiveness of what they're actually giving there. And if they can't use those higher modals, that probably means that they need to improve their evidence that's behind it to strengthen that. Uh, so that when they say, you know, this, this clearly shows rather than just, you know, this, is, this makes it slightly more evident or slightly more likely, right? You wanna be shifting things to be focusing on that. And so you're just telling them how to do it, right? Go and learn about modal writing and then come back and adjust your writing to make it more persuasive. Okay? You're not giving them all the answers, you're just saying what they need to go and research, what they need to learn to improve. 
The third thing you wanna make sure you do not do is do not give it back covered in red pen, okay? Don't go through and fix all the little spelling mistakes and where the full stops and oh, this needs a paragraph here and this, okay? Much better if you just use a highlighter, okay? Use a highlighter system and just go, okay, uh, all the good stuff is in green. This was great, this is great, this is great, right? Uh, the things that you want them to improve are in yellow. Okay? And so you can go through and go, great, 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 yellow, yellow, yellow. So yellow, that, that's like, and they might come and go, why is this yellow? You go, well, that needs a paragraph, right? But you don't want to be covering it in red pen and scribbling all over it because the kids look at that and they're like, oh, I don't want to read that. Whereas highlight is nice and easy. They can go, oh, look at all that green I've got. And then I've got, oh, just a few yellows. Okay, uh, and again, if, if, we, if you're going to use the highlighter system, again, go back to this whole idea. Identify one area, just highlight one thing that you want them to improve. Don't highlight everything. Okay, highlight the one thing that's going to make the biggest improvement on their writing, which isn't normally their grammar. Okay, I'm not saying not to help them with their grammar eventually, but improve the bigger things first and then come back to grammar. Just say, even, you could go, you need to improve your grammar. Please run this through Grammarly or a spell check or <laughs> something before you submit it. Right? Basic kind of things will help them to improve that kind of process. So they're your three do's and three don'ts. So do identify one area of improvement, give them directions for how to improve that and then schedule a time to check in uh, so they have a deadline for when to get it done by. And the three don'ts are do not focus on everything, do not give marks and grades and not cover it in red pen. They're the three do's and the three don'ts for effective and efficient feedback. And doing this will reduce your time in your, as you're going through giving feedback to students but it will also increase the impact that it has on your students. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please make sure you hit subscribe. Uh, you can head over to teacherspd.net and click the button in the top right-hand corner to get emails about each of these episodes and updates and stuff about what's happening to help you to become a more efficient teacher. Mm -hmm.